What's going on everybody? It's your boy Mike from Seattle. This is the return of the two-time non-stimulus check receiving champ, your boy who was apparently uh, just over the required income level. It's neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. I'm not sore about it. I understand I haven't made a video well, <laughs> in a little bit. Uh, my bad, my bad. First of all, a uh, uh, little bit of news, a little, little bit of news for the channel. I turned 30 on November 1st of last year, um, and it took me about the last four to five months to cry. Um, you know, I had to go through all the stages of grief. You know, I mean, it was, I, I was, I was in denial. I was, I was angry. I was bargaining, and then eventually, I just swallowed it and decided that, you know, if I'm lucky, maybe it'll just all be over before I hit 40, and we can call it a good run. <laughs> Last I told you guys, I was in the process of seller negotiating seller financing. In my last video I did was a, was a live real-time negotiating of me doing seller financing and working. And then the closing was pushed from the 1st of November to the 1st of December. Why? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I through the email process and going back and forth with negotiations until I could get a deal squared away. Well, I did secure that deal. And I never bothered to bring you guys the actual numbers on that deal, uh, how much money it's cash flowing, why I liked it, what the benefits were opposed to the traditional financing. So what I'd like to do today is actually break down the numbers on that house. I'm going to bust out my little handy dandy calculator for you right here and um, talk about exactly what happened. So this house is my third house that I bought in the market that I've been purchasing houses in. Again, I don't openly share the name of that market simply because my mentor, Mark, who's a wonderful guy, by the way, congratulations to Mark on getting your new house in Florida and moving to Florida and living my dream out. Hopefully, I can join you soon, and please don't get eaten by the alligator in your backyard you sent me a picture of. Oh, hi, Mark. That would be less than cool. I still need your knowledge as well as you're a pretty cool dude. Um, <laughs> so congrats to Mark. Everybody, he comments on the videos. He's probably talked with you in the comments if you comment. Um, and then he is always referred to as Obi Mark Kenobi. So that is, uh, that is Mark, my man. This was my third house in the market that I've been purchasing houses in. Now the first one that I bought, I bought using a turnkey property provider. The second house that I bought in that market, I did using a real estate agent. And the third property that I bought is the one that I just got and that was through seller financing. So I figured out how to get a house from three different methods of acquisition. And I have to be honest with you, in terms of the overall cost, seller financing is the best. Just Far and away, I saved a lot of money. I was able to get into a house. Total cost to get into it was about $9,000. That was my 20% down payment. That was my title search and title insurance as well as uh, wiring money for the earnest money, which is just part of the down payment anyways. Um, and then there may have been a couple of other like fees to like literally s send direct express mail back and from that I had to sign on my documents. Um, the, a traditional lender would send like a mobile notary to me. This was on me to go print their documents on legal paper, get them all signed, and then overnight mail them back. But uh, $9,000 was my total cost approximately, like maybe like 9,100. Total cost approximately to get into this house. Now let's talk about the house for a minute. Um, it is a three bedroom, one bath, which rents better than just about anything else in the market. I mean, a three bedroom, two bath is good too. Um, but I like the three bedroom, one bath, or three bedroom, two bath model because your tenants will stay there longer, which means you have less turnover. And if you know anything about rentals, turnover is what kills you. When somebody moves out, you lose a month, maybe two of rent. You've got to pay to clean the place, pay to upkeep the place, advertise, show it. Uh, it, it's just it's just a hassle, right? If someone will stay there, if you can maintain and retain a tenant, that is in your best interest. So three bedroom, one baths are what I want, ideally, if I can get them. Uh, and that's what I got in this case. So it's a three bedroom, one bath that rents for $750 a month. It's my lowest renting unit. Now, my property manager and I agree, and my real estate agent agrees, that they could probably easily rent for $800. Uh, I have no desire to raise the rents until we are beyond this crazy uh, COVID thing that we got going on still here. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube yet or if, or if the video will get struck, but I only get like 50 views anyway, so whatever. The point is, um, at some point I'll move the rents to where they actually are supposed to be, uh, but I just, I'm just trying not to uh, put extra stress on my tenants uh, in this situation. I'm just happy if they're paying, and it cash flows as is anyways, even though it's below, significantly below market rent. You know, a $50 increase on a $750 property, you know, that's like a 8% increase in rent just to get it up to market value because uh, it's significantly under. 
Anyway, so the numbers on the property. So my mortgage on the property is $215 a month. Now, in this case, it did not include the insurance and it did not include the taxes on the property. Once I actually factor those things in, uh, I'm a little bit closer to $300 a month in my actual expenses. Okay, so I'm gonna use my calculator here just to do my numbers. I'm gonna run through them real quick for you. So again, the, oh, the cost to actually get into the property after I factored in everything to get into the property cost me about $9,100. That was my cost to acquire the property. My monthly rent is 750 bucks. Now, I always take 30% off the top right away. That 30% covers my my property manager who only charges 8%, but I always factor in as if she charges 10 just in case. Uh, so 10% to my property manager, 10% for vacancies, and 10% for maintenance. I just set that aside in a separate bank account that I have titled vacancies and maintenance. So I take 30% of that 750, so 750 times 0.3, that's $225 immediately I set aside. Next thing I'm gonna do is actually need to factor in my mortgage and I need to factor in my insurance and then setting aside my money for taxes and that comes out to like right about 300 bucks a month. So I take the 225, my expenses for the 30% and then I add to that another $300 and I end up with a price of 525. So my monthly expenses on this property are 525 bucks. 750 minus 525 and I end up with a net positive cash flow of $225. And again, my range that I like to go at is between like 250 and above. So this is slightly below, but I bought it because it was such a cheap house and I know the rent can go up. And once I raise the rent and for how cheap it was, it's a really good deal. So my $225 a month is my positive cash flow after all expenses, being conservative with my expenses, like overestimating what they would be. Um, and I end up with a yearly cash flow, 225 times 12, of $2,700. That's my net positive cash flow each year. Now, I divide that by my initial investment, which was 9,100, and I get a factor of 0.29, I multiply that by 100, and my annual return on investment is 29.6% return on my initial money every single year year without raising the rents. That's, at, that's what it is right now with my current numbers right now. That is a really good return on my investment. Extremely good. Better than I'm doing in the other two houses, I believe. I'd have to run the numbers on those again. Um, so you can see right away why I like this property. Uh, I'm glad that I got it. It's very beneficial to me. I make a good amount of money on it. I have nothing except for high hopes for the property because the rents can go up. And again, if you remember back to my earlier videos, this property was listed at $34,900 and I got them to sell it for $34,150 or something like that because uh, I got them I got them to negotiate down. When I looked it up on Realtor.com and I looked it up on Zillow, you know, Realtor.com estimated it at like 90,000 is the value and Zillow was like 60,000. Now those are infamous for being wrong and infamous for being wrong in the upward direction because they're trying to suck in buyers or sellers who want to sell their house and then they'll pair them up with a real estate agent they recommend and pick up a fee. So they're usually wrong in the upward direction, but are they wrong? by three times the value of the house. If you have a $200,000 house, are they telling you it's worth 600,000? I mean, that's what I have, a $34,000 house they think is worth 90,000. I don't think it's worth 90,000. I think it's probably worth 50,000, which means that I picked up $15,000 in equity on this property just by buying into it, which is fantastic. So anyways, these are the numbers on the house that I just bought in that market in the Midwest where I bought. Uh, I have other videos that are coming your way, guys. I know it's been a while. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I have been busy. I have been um, working a whole lot. I have been a little bit stressed um, trying to improve my skills for a different, couple of different things. I took the sergeant's exam at work, see, seeing about uh, keeping the option open to promote if I wanted to, though I don't really want to. Uh, but I you know, was studying for that. And of course, being a single father to a only child who is a handful is always a uh, pleasure. Um, I do love my son very much, but it is very time consuming. Anyways, I hope you appreciated this video. I have a bunch more coming. I know I've been lazy and uh, we'll catch you next time.